Good evening. Thank you for joining us in our home for this Wednesday night broadcast. If you're listening tonight, we want to thank you for being here, but we also would like for you to make a comment uh, to just let us know you're out there so we know you're listening and we can be praying for you as well. I'd like to begin by singing a song. This is an old song, really, that's been a favorite of mine uh, since I was a young Christian. I sung it as a teenager and used to sing it with uh, my mother, and uh, it's a blessing to many people. I feel the touch of hands so kind and tender. They're leading me in paths that I must try. I'll have no fear for Jesus walks beside me. For I'm sheltered in the arms of God. So let the storms rage high, the dark clouds rise. They won't worry me, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms. the last mile you must run. I'll fall asleep and wake in God's new heaven. Sheltered safe within the arms of God. So let the storms rage high, the dark they won't worry me, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walks with me, and not a verse shall harm me, for I'm sheltered in the arms of God. to not get emotional today, uh, partly because of everything that's going on, and then I see the comments uh, that just keep coming uh, from all of you. And uh, excuse me if I do get emotional, but uh, I miss being in the house of God with people, And but I'm thankful for this opportunity to be together with you in this way. And uh, you know, we know these are trying times for most everyone. We want to bring uh, a word of encouragement tonight. We want to talk about uh, things that we know, and, and there's some things that we don't know. Uh, but we want to also talk about what we as the people of God can do. You know, in the Old Testament, I was reading about where the, the Israelite community set out from the desert, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. 
And they came to a place there was no water for the people to drink. And so they quarreled with Moses. And they said, give us water to drink. And finally, they said, is the Lord among us or not? I suppose there may be those today that may be asking the same question, either audibly or inwardly. Is the Lord among us or not? Perhaps we're not all that different from the children of Israel. They'd been delivered by the hand of God from the bondage in Egypt, and they come to a hard place in the desert, and they begin to complain. A lot of people today are uh, complaining, and, and we see the things that are going on with uh, people hoarding from the stores and things like that, taking more than what they should, taking advantage of others. And we're reminded that we haven't changed all that much as a society. They began to complain and they wished they'd, they said they wish they'd stayed back in Egypt, back in the land of bondage. Well, you know, sometimes life is hard. Sometimes we find ourselves in the desert. And maybe we're tempted to think that our former life of sin and bondage was better than what it is now. But I want to remind you that our current struggles are not forever. This too shall pass. Now God has a future for his people. And the people of God, you know, they spent 40 years in the wilderness wandering. But I realize that maybe they wouldn't have spent nearly as much time lost and afraid and confused if only they had listened to God and trusted in his provision. We're living in a time that most of us have never experienced. Never in my lifetime have I watched the closing of businesses, schools, and churches like we see today. Many of the things happening today, it's something like out of a science fiction movie or a novel. Uh, it's just uh, hard for us to fathom. And uh, I look around today as as I see people at the hospital and people out in the community, uh, with it seems like their mood is just very subdued and the mood is very gloom. Our economy has been hit hard and people are scared. There's a lot we don't know, you know. But at the same time, I want to remind you of some things that, that we do know and talk about what we can do as a people of God. God is still on the throne, and he's still in control. And I believe, you know, our, our country uh, and our world has seen hard times before, but many of us haven't experienced those hard times. We haven't lived long enough to experience many of the things that even some of the people that are older than us have experienced, and, and then some who have already gone on to be with the Lord. God, Jesus said that in this world you'll have tribulation. He said those that are born in this world will have tribulation. But he said, be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. And so I think it's important for us to, to be calm and understand the facts as we understand them. You know, according to what we've been told, most people are going to be just fine. But we're going to uh, face some tough times, no doubt, and from time to time. Uh, we, we want to understand that uh, we want to do the best we can, and that's why we're obeying this uh, at least 15-day ban in our church, and we're, we're not meeting tonight in a, in a group setting, and we're not meeting on Sunday in a group setting, and we'll reevaluate after that. But we want to do the best we can, and you know, I, I want to encourage everyone to be thoughtful of others. Maybe you're young, and you don't have to worry too much about it yourself. But think about others that you may go places and come back and carry this to older people who have you know been uh, so good to our country and who have helped pave the way for you and I to be here we need to be thinking about them as well and uh, that's the reason for all the closing it's to try to keep the number from spiking dramatically in order not to overwhelm our health care system you know the data shows that people may be contagious at least five to seven days prior to having even any symptoms. So hopefully by doing these things, it will lessen the impact of this disease. So what can we do as a people of God? Well, first of all, we should keep the faith. This storm will not last forever. 
We must see beyond the darkness to better days. If others see our faith, maybe they will come to faith as well. I'm reminded of the story of John Wesley on the ship the day that terrible storm that almost cost the lives of everyone on board. Panic set in, and Wesley noticed the Moravians, the German believers, singing and praising God through the storm. It was then that he said, I want that kind of faith. And not long after that, at a meeting at Aldersgate, Wesley heard the gospel being read from Luther's preface to the book of Romans. And he said, I felt my heart strangely warmed. May we be an example of faith to others during these times. Number two, we can reach out to those who need a word of encouragement or a helping hand. Maybe someone will be, be uh, compelled to share one of those tin bags of toilet paper they took from the store <laughs> when they're hoarding or whatever else they may be hoarding. Again, it's not a time to think only of ourselves, but let's take this time to think of others around us. Number three, we can pray. I encourage you to be intentional about having your prayer time. I believe prayer moves the heart of God. So pray, church pray. Pray without ceasing. If you don't know what to pray, Pray the Lord's Prayer every night. Lately, my wife and I have been praying the Lord's Prayer each night. And, you know, we say that prayer every Sunday at church pretty much. But lately, it has a special meaning. And it's been very, very important to me. I've been praying in the hospital with patients. I pray it at night with my wife. We pray it in church. And so I encourage you to pray the Lord's Prayer if you want. You can pray uh, any prayer, but the Lord's Prayer is always a good one. Number four, we can worship. I still believe worship is collective and personal, but if we can't meet in a building, let's take the time to take advantage of the internet and listen to sermons and join our church online in worship. For those that aren't able to get on the internet, we'll provide uh, emails and texts and different ways for them, uh, or even handwritten copies. or something. We'll find a way for them to get our messages. And uh, most of the people have at least email if they don't have Facebook. And if you uh, know someone who is not getting this, uh, we'll find a way to do that. This coming Sunday, we'll be offering our worship service online once again. It should be downloaded and ready to watch by 11 a.m., you can go to the Salem Facebook page and watch it there, or our YouTube page. You can Google Salem United Methodist Church under Meta, Kentucky, and there you'll find all our services. My hope and plan at this time is to resume worship services as soon as possible. We've been asked to buy by this 15-day ban, and we want to honor that. And after that, we'll reevaluate. Those who have compromised health may want to continue to isolate themselves until this has passed. And so we want to just continue to uh, remind you that God loves you and he's with you always, no matter what you may be going through right now. Uh, I want to uh, also say, feel free to call Sandy and I if you have any needs at all. If you just need to talk, uh, we are available. Let us uh, help you in any way we can. If you know someone that needs something that we can help them with, feel free uh, to call us at any time. And I want to close with a, a, a song, and I invite you to join me in these uh, praise songs here. We'll begin with a familiar tune uh, that's really, Oh How I Love Jesus, and then we'll sing, For He is Lord. There is a name I love to I love to sing its words It sounds like music in my ear The sweetest name on earth Sing it! Oh, how I love Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me, for he is Lord. He is Lord. 
again, I just want to remind you that this won't last forever and try your best to see God in the storms of life. God never promised that he wouldn't allow storms, but he promised he'd be with us. And you know, who knows that maybe more people will come to faith through this trial than have come to faith in a long time. I already believe that there's more people that are joining us in worship, even right now, as I can see by the comments, than we normally would have on a Wednesday night service in our church. And as churches are opening up their uh, services online on Facebook, millions of people around the world are joining. People are looking for hope. People are looking for answers right now. And I believe that hope is found in God. And I believe together that we can ride out this storm. But we must trust in the Lord, look out for one another, and continue to show the love that God has for us. And it's in times like these that we realize that many of the things that we, uh, we get upset about in life and we argue about in denominations are so insignificant. What's really important right now is that we draw together as brothers and sisters in Christ and love everyone regardless of who they are or where they are right now. I want to invite you to join us in the Lord's Prayer as we begin to close. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you until we meet again. We'll be praying for you.